Alright, hey, so OCG Bandits just dropped, and it's really interesting. I don't have the image right now. Uh, I'll edit a boss, edit the image in right here. So, right, so that's the Bandits. I know, it's in Japanese. You, you guys can't read it. So, let's cut back to this screen right here. Alright, thanks, boss. You're, you're great. So, let's talk about the OCG Bandits and see what impact it's going to have on our metagame. So, let's start off with what is technically banned. I'll, go, I'll discuss all the cards. I'll, I'll discuss all the cards and everything. So, let's, let's get started. So, first off, then we have a level eater. Level Eater Limited is Magician of Fate, Kieran, uh, oh, I forgot to put you in. Where are you? Uh, where are you? Uh, Cyrus Dine, Cyrus Dine is Limited as well, and then, uh, and then, uh, Cyframe Lord Omega. And then for Semi-Limited, we got, a uh, we have Moratech, BLS, DDD Slime, DDD, uh, Lima, Lavina, Star Stuff, Chair, Dragonfly, Wisdom Eye, Mathematician, El Shadal, Monster Gate and Domain. All right, so that's uh, semi. For unlimited back three, we got a uh, we got Sangan Scout, uh, Scout Charge, Gateway, Wall Revealing Light, and Sinister Shadow Game and Daza Restrict. So let's discuss this banners and see what does this mean for the OCG. What how and, and and what does it mean is and see how it's gonna affect their metagame and and whatnot. So let's start with the ban. Uh, so level level eater is surprisingly it's the only card banned. I don't think anyone saw this coming. There were some people who wanted this card hit. So in both in both metagame we, OCG and TCG, we've been seeing a lot of synchro spam deck uh, come out, and level eater is a key component because it allows you to tutor any level. It allows you to manip uh, manipulate everything, so it's easier for you to uh, do all your combo play with synchro spamming, and that's why level eater has been hit. Because yeah, as you can see, this card is really not is not that you know it's, it's not that greatly designed when it came out. Well, it was badly designed when it first came, when it was a bad card in the first game, but now recently it's been broken because it allows you to tutor your levels to easy, like to easily synchro spam. Magician of Fate's been at ban in OCG for a long ass time. It finally came back to one. I don't know why they didn't just put it three. I don't know what they're trying to do with experimenting it at at one. I don't think OCG has some super secret spice that's coming up for it to be worried at one. Uh, Cyberstein, Cyberstein recently been. It's, Cyberstein has been having a love hate relationship with the OCG Bandless. It's been at it got banned originally, then it went to one, then it went to three, now it's back to being at one. And uh, everyone can honestly see why OC, uh, why Cyberstein had to be limited again. I mean, pay 5,000 special summon a uh, exit exterior or last warrior, and your opponent can't play Yu Gi Oh! It's a really it's a so at three, it just added up because in Metal Foes, you would do you would summon it, pay 5,000, summon these guys, then pop it with your Metal Foes to get your search so that way you don't have a uh, was a use of 700 monster on your field for it to be beaten over Kieran, Kieran's been a problem card for a while and and got, recently got hit in our TCG list and I was at one in their list and a lot of people could understand why Kieran's at one because it basically unless you have a follow up play after your monster Kieran just say nah nah Kieran's like nah nah fam we, we good yeah, like nah nah no, no more place for you yeah, so carrying that one, I totally saw it. It's totally uh, justifiable because OCG has this at the main Agni card, you know. And then finally, we have o Cyframe Lord Omega. Yeah, everyone kind of saw Omega, hoping Omega to get hit because Omega is not a really good good design uh, synchro because it's a generic, and that's what made it a problem because a lot of deck, except Cyframe, conveniently, ironically, was abusing this card like Trish. So basically, like I said, it's all part of synchro uh, level uh, synchro spam. You would. You can easily summon out three Omega turn one and then get rid of three cards in your opponent's hand. So they start off with like one or two or two or one cards if you depending if you make Trish or not. So Omega being at hit to one is perfectly understandable and Emma could easily saw that coming. So for semi we have Moral Tech. Moral Tech at two. It's it's been at one in both lists for a while. It got hit back during the artifact shit all era. And so Moral Tech at one, uh, I see at two, it's not gonna do much of a threat because uh in OCG players don't really dedicate dedicate uh, dedicate to the back row a lot because of because the fear of harpy and and everything and, and everything and that's why more tech at two is probably not gonna do much over there and everything so more tech at two I don't see it doing anything to be honest because harp the harpy fear is like really real because OCG players usually tend to make the you want you also want to make the unbreakable board rather than making setting a bunch of traps to set your opponent can't play Yu-Gi-Oh so Moral tech at Moral tech at two is not gonna do much. BLS at two is really interesting. I never thought I'll see B, see a day where BLS went to two, because uh, because uh, BLS has always been an nostalgia, a great card, you know. So BLS at two, I don't do I see this doing much. Uh, maybe maybe not, depending on how how strong people want to summon BLS, because BLS in both 
list hasn't been played in a while. I don't I don't remember the last time I seen a BLS in any top deck in in the meta game. So that's really interesting. I think they might be experimenting with BLS because you guys don't remember uh I, I, like two years ago or so OCG put Dad from one to two for one format, and then to immediately put it back to one. So they might be ex they might be doing the same thing, experimenting with BLS. I don't think this is gonna do much. Honestly, it's, who knows? And then uh, DDD, I'm gonna first off say I'm not a DDD player, so I really don't know the how important these. But I know these are like combo cards because DDD is like a really high uh, ceiling deck that can do with like from what I see with any like with a lot of three card combination allows you to open up. And these are most of the time these are involved in the combination. So DDD, this is weakening DDD does it hurt their? I don't think it's gonna hurt their consistency that much because uh, the deck is already pretty strong because you have a lot of. The DD is really a combo deck that you gotta know how to do your combo. So these hitting to two might not hurt the deck that much. Who knows? Honestly, uh, Star Surf Chair. Chair has been at one in OCG for a while. I don't. I don't remember when it got hit, but it's been at one because of a Stick Chair combo was too strong. So I don't see it be doing anything at two. He's not doing anything. It wasn't doing anything. Star Surf wasn't even doing anything to begin with over there. So being at two, I don't see it do anything. Oh, yeah. Uh, Seeing doing anything, so yeah, I don't think it's gonna do much. Oh boy, we got our boy Dragonfly. Oh man, we got Dragonfly back. So whoever thought whenever Dragonfly would come back to two, was it? I think Hornet is at two over there, I believe. So Dragonfly is at two. I don't think. Uh, so I don't think Dragonfly being at two is gonna help in Zector a lot. It's not gonna make them top tier shit unless some broken support comes out. So I see in Zector. I think Zector and Hornet. I don't see as a big deal over here for the OCG meta game. Them having this at Two is not, probably not going to do much, to be honest. So interesting, uh, interestingly, Wisdom Eye is back at two, which is really interesting. I don't, because I honestly was not expecting Wisdom Eye to go to two. I think Wisdom Eye was perfectly fair at one because Wisdom Eye essentially, if you if you open up with double Wisdom Eye, you open up a free uh a free two card into your scale because you have both Wisdom Eye pop 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 them each, get your uh Ulf Dragon uh Ulf Dragon Pulse Dragon. Dragon Pit into your scale, and then you could Pendulum Summon just get you a free rank four. So I interesting to see that they put Wisdom Eye back at two because I guess the thought process. Oh, it's not easily searchable anymore now. So, but I don't know. Pendulum is still a big thing over there. I don't think former Pell Magicians MM isn't really doing much. Actually, it hasn't been doing much ever since they killed the deck. So Wisdom Eye at two is interesting. I don't think it's gonna help. It's not gonna help the OCG. Uh, being at two is not gonna do much for uh, Pep MM over there. Math, math is interesting because math's been at one in OG for like a few years now, I believe, because it got it, it went to one with the Shadal hit when they did like the whole Shadal cleansing and got rid of everything Shadal related. So math is back at two. He's not gonna do a thing. I don't, anyone knows gonna see it do anything. They could have bought this back at three. He's not, they're not gonna do anything unless you know, I said unless OG because it was like some super super secret spice. Uh, El Shadal, El Shadal is interesting because uh, as you know, recently with the recent set. They've been giving support to the old uh, DT, I guess this DT season season electric, season two electric boogaloo. So they've been giving old support to to the DT like like was Envision Venom had the Yang Zing and Satella Knight, and people were speculating that Shadal is gonna get their own DT support. So El Shadal, this might be there to help the for eventually the Shadal archetype. But El Shadal got hit back along with a. Uh, Along with the Shadal stuff a while back, uh, when they cleansed the Shadal, so El Shadal at two might not do anything over there because the only viable build of Shadals over there is the Train Boat, and I don't think it's gonna do anything because Construct is banned over there in both in both art in both lists. So El Shadal at two is not gonna do much. Uh, Monster Gate, Monster Gate has also had a love hate re relationship with the ban list. It's been at one, two, three, back to back to one, so back to two now again. So it's back to being at two again. So, cause, cause Monster Gate is like a really weird card, uh, cause basically Inferno was, was was using it, but Inferno hasn't been doing anything over there, and I don't believe Inferno or any other deck is gonna abuse Monster Gate that properly. Oh no, hold on, except Airblade Terrible. We got, I forgot about Airblade Terrible, which is not gonna do anything over there to be honest. So Monster Gate two is not gonna do anything. Reasoning is at one over there, I believe as well. So I don't think, I don't think this is gonna do anything much. Okay, so uh, Domain Domain is interesting, right? Because uh, Domain got hit last list over there because they, they were trying, oh, let's get rid of Monarch now so we could move on. So Domain at 2, is it going to help Mar uh, Monarchs out that much over there? I don't think so, I believe. Because what is it? They don't have Pantheism, and they don't have Stormforth, but they do have Triple Aether though. So that's interesting. But I don't think with one Domain, it's going to help the deck out that much because OZG is like a, is like I said, is, is, is a go big or go home over there with turn 1. So 
I don't feel like Domain is going to do much over there, to be honest. And then, uh, so then we have Sangan. Sangan is back at 3 now, which is really understandable because, uh, Sangan wasn't doing anything even at 1, be even with at 1, because I got the useless Arata that doesn't help the card, whatever. It doesn't make the card that great. So being at 1, 3, I can perfectly see and it's not going to do anything now, so which is perfectly fine. Scout at 3 is really interesting because. So Scout's at 3 again, you can pay 8 and make Cleave for a great again. So. Scout at 3, I don't feel it's going to do much because was, I think C4 is at full power over there, they, they don't, they're not losing anything except except a sacrifice with it, which they could easily play around because you could play the Demise, you could basically play full power Demise uh, uh, Cleese over there now, but like I said, OCG has has, has Harpies and has Harpies uh, Better Duster and that's a, that's a problem card over there for their for their meta gimmick, because you don't want, because in OCG you don't dedicate a uh, big board because because you don't know if your opponent's gonna have this or not. So I don't think Scout at three is gonna do anything much. It might do some stuff. It might be, I mean, they might play uh, more Scout in Metaphors now because in OCG you would tech in one Scout, one Monolith to make a free Infinity. So they might tech in more of these now. Now that they lost Kieran and Stein, because Kieran and Stein were 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 pretty much combo, pretty much how you make big unbeatable boards in Metaphor. So. We might see more scout. We might see more scout and stuff over there now because of this. Uh, because of that, charge at three is interesting because that technically means that uh, light storms are at full power now because a uh, solar recharge is at three over there. So, so with that addition, I don't. We, with that addition, uh, sh um, was it light storms are pretty much at full power, but I don't think it's gonna do anything over there. Even with three charge, three solar. I mean, uh, was it uh, people? Is it? There might be uh, there might be chaos built now because it's because of, because we have BLS back at two now. People might be like, oh man, we could probably do some cute some cute chaos built over there because we have three three charge three allures all that all that fun stuff. But charge at that three, I perfectly see. I don't think it's gonna make that much big of an impact in OCG meta game. I mean, now no still too early, like uh, still too early to say because this just came out. But I don't think it's gonna do that anything much. Uh, let's see, Gateway to Gateway to Six is interesting. It's back at three now, so yeah. So hey, welcome back to Gateway Loop now. Gateway Loop because of this, because of this card. So everyone's, so everyone's gonna go back to playing the Gateway Loop, I believe. I don't think so. What was it? It was at two for the longest time in OCG, and now it's finally back to three. Even with this, even with this thing at two, is not. Th I mean, at three, I don't think it was feel gonna do do as much because, like I said, OCG is it's pretty much the mind state of OCG. You gotta play big or you gotta go home. So. And six Aaron can't really establish that much of an unbreakable board first turn. Like Kieran, like that was it. Barking on Beast is cute, but you can't really do much. I mean, unless people are gonna go back to playing the Ouroboros Trish loop, which I don't, which I believe is still viable over there, which I believe is viable now because of, because you have the consistency with because of Gateway now at three, which is easy. But I don't think it's gonna help deck that much. So Gateway at three, I don't see it doing anything. Then we got uh, the great, uh, the great wall, make a great wall of Yu-Gi-Oh. So, War Realize has been, at, it's been on the list for the longest time because, because back then, you could do some stupid uh, FTK loop with Life Equalizer, with Life Equalizer over there, but Life Equalizer is banned in OCG, so we're not, so Life, so War is not really a, a big problem, big, is a problem card not because of that. Life, it was Life Equalizer and Self-Destruct button that, that, that was causing the, that was causing the problem uh, with War Revealing, like, because you would just use this card, activate this bullshit. And then do some stupid cheesy. So wall revealing at three is perfectly understandable. I don't think anyone's gonna be taking the self destruct button and the wall revealing right now. And then uh, life equalizer is banned, so yeah, that's perfectly fine. Uh, next we got Sinister Shadow Game. Shadow Game has been at two for a while in OCG because it's all part of the Great Shadow Cleansing that they did. So so Shadow Game at three is not gonna do much. Shadow is not really doing anything over there unless they get that broken support in, in Invasion Event, I mean not Invasion Event, in uh, Raging Tempest or Maximum Crisis. So because of that, so Shadow Game's not gonna, Shadow's not gonna do much over there. Then finally we have Thousand Eye Restrict. Thousand Eye came back for 3 now, which is perfectly understandable. No one was playing it, even at 1. And because of that, because was it, I think, uh, was it Instant Fusion's at 1 over there, I believe? No, no, Instant Fusion's at 3 Nordens, man, yeah. Even then, no one's playing a Thousand Eye Restrict. It's not gonna do anything, so that's really, Yes, yeah, so that's what. So that's what. That's what my analysis of the OCG meta game. So, like, so no, there's some cards that didn't, some archer that didn't get hit. Most notably, blue eyes. Blue eyes. Nothing happened to blue eyes. Blue eyes is still at full power. And from what I understand in the OCG meta game, players been has been fading out the playing blue eyes to play other decks. But 
Now that Blue Eyes Metal Force somewhat got hit, people might start playing Blue Eyes again. Uh, like Blue Eyes is still a strong deck over there, it's just people have been getting tired of Blue Eyes from what I read, from what I heard from players, so Blue Eyes might be coming back again. It's still a very strong deck over there, so yeah. Metal Force, like I said, Metal Force lost the Kieran and the Stein, but they got the Scout now, so they could do more. They could probably make at least two Infinities uh, now every turn. Let's end up with two Infinities, I believe, because of that now. If you can open up the Scout and everything. Uh, let's see, next is Dark Lord. Dark Lord didn't get hit, because Dark Lord just came out over there. So, uh, and Dark Lord is already a strong deck, because you could just, because it literally just tutors itself, and it, all the effects are broken. Especially Ixtap, it's not like the most broken Dark Lord. ABCs didn't get hit whatsoever, which I found really amazing, because I thought people were going to, because everyone doesn't like it. ABC does the same thing, because ABC just makes down breakable field because of this thing, which I feel like they sh should have hit ABCs at uh, some capacity, like hit the you could have hit Dragon Buster or something, and uh, what else? And uh, and Cosmo which just came out. I does it. There's no hit, obviously, of them because they literally just came out over there. So, so this might be paving the way for Cosmo to be quote unquote meta over there because I don't think Cosmo has been doing anything. I mean, it got like a few toss, but other than that, it hasn't been doing that much of a that much impact in OCG. So they might. So we might this so we might see Cosmo doing more power play now might be pushing their way into the meta game right now because of that and everything so which is really interesting because I, I can't wait to see how this how this plays out over there not because of that but other than that this this is actually a somewhat good OCG list I mean like they there's something getting rid of like OCG likes to put cards that are no longer relevant like what they're doing over here and like TZ would just keeps a bunch of cards hit for no reason All right so this is just this is really interesting uh they, sh they should have hit Blue Eyes and um, ABCs. ABC is not from what I from what I can see. It's not really good. I mean, it's a it's a strong deck, but it's not like a really fair deck. Cause it just makes makes those unbreakable boards. Blue Eyes is perfectly fine, fine as a deck. Over in OCG, it's not going to do much. But other than that, this is really interesting. I like I said, this is a really fine list because they hit a lot of prop problem cards over there in OCG. Most notably with the uh, Kieran Stein uh, level eater Omega. And and while while every other deck is still because every other deck now is still able to perform like you can still play metal foes you can still play DDD I believe like I said, I'm not top tier knowledge I mean uh, Shadal just got more more of their cards back so you can play more you can play train Shadal's until this construct is obviously never coming back and um, and then Wisdom Eye is still interesting to see along with BLS so this is a really interesting list for the OCG I can't wait to see how they adapt to this meta game and, and everything. And so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say. That's my analysis of the of the OCG ban list, from what I can tell, from what I've been looking at at the OCG metagame and seeing what OCG players have said. And so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, hey, thanks, bye.